I already built this, but I'm going to show you what you do. So if you did want to build this um, yourself, you'd run this doctor run command, which involves this workspace optimizer thing. It's a little bit big. Um, and if you ran it, it, was gonna, it would build all the things to get docker running. Um, you can find that command in the readme somewhere. So. Okay, yeah. So if you want to find that command yourself, um, we have a script called. Uh, let's see. Actually, I don't know. Let's see. This is good for documentation to figure out. Yeah. So if you want to run that command yourself, you can look at our like deploy local script. Um, which is in the scripts directory. It is called deploy local.sh. It has that command in it. So that'll work. Um, anyway, so because we already have done that, it's outputted all of our WASM files into this artifacts repo. And so the 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 contract that we want to store is this contract called rewards distributor. And what this contract does is, uh, like you might guess, is it distributes stake and rewards. Um, so to do that, um, if if you're watching this and don't have GenoD installed, you'll have to do that. You can find how to do that on the Geno docs. Um, so in order to store that, I'm going to do a GenoD TX wasm store command. And I'm going to store artifacts slash CW. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see, and that should work if I did that. Let's, um, okay, yeah, let's do it. Gina DTX, well, let me store this from me. And then let it in. Cool, okay, so then once we do this, it'll store it. There's not a good mid. Cool. Okay, so we've stored it. Then we've got our transaction here. So we want to query that transaction. Um, and that's going to give us a lot of output. And inside of that output, it's going to be a code ID. Let's see. Um, this is so weird. Okay, cool. Code ID. So the code idea is like an identifier for this contract that we've just stored on chain. And so in this case, our code ID is 807. So what I want to do now is I want to I'm go testnet.data.zone and let's just like deploy this thing or make one. So I'm going to make a DAO. Actually, let's just use one I already have. I already have this DAO called token DAO. It does nothing. It's just for testing. <laughs> um, and I'm going to use token DAO. I'm going to set up stake rewards for token DAO. So to do that, make a proposal called deploy taking rewards contract. This, whatever this will deploy the staking rewards contract for this app. Oh. And then I'm going to add an action, which instantiates a smart contract. And for the code ID, I'm going to put our code ID. The label, I'm going to say token DAO rewards distributor. Um, I'm not going to send any funds. The admin is going to be my DAO, which it currently is. And for the message, we're going to have to figure out what we need to do for the message. Let's do that. Let's go to DAO contracts. Go to rewards distributor, source, contract RS, or let's get message RS, and look at our instantiate message. So this is what this is the information this guy needs in order to be instantiated. So he's an owner, a staking address, a reward rate, and a reward ticket. So cool. So for the owner of our contract, we should probably just make that our DAO. 
um, for the let's see our next field is staking adder. And for that, we're going to make that our um, staking contract. The next field is our reward rate. And for this, this is the number of tokens that are going to get paid out per block. Um, and I think in this case, let's just make it like absurdly large so that we can see it going up. So I'm going to say like pay out like 100,000 tokens a block. And then for the reward token, uh, it's going to be our governance token. Cool. So is this this makes sense to everyone? What we're doing right now? This is a little. I'm going a little fast, but I'd love if there are, if people do like have questions, I'd love to answer them. So how's, how are we how are we doing, guys? <laughs> how's life? <laughs> For each yeah. time that we run this, do we have to? Co uh, store a completely new contract for each DAO? Nope. Uh, you can reuse it. So if you were making a DAO on testnet, you could reuse ADA7. Um, that's a great question. Uh, what else? Anything else? Any questions that make sense so far? If you add a payment, what does it do? Like what kind of features or actions does it impose? Yeah, so it's not going to, in this case, it's not going to do anything. Like, we'd just be like, we could, like, send money to this contract, uh, but it would, like, do nothing. The contract would just, like, take it, and you'd lose your money forever. Um, so this is, like, this template, this action we're looking at here on data is, like, generic for, like, instantiating any smart contract. It's not specifically for this smart contract. Um, cool. So... Our proposal looking pretty good. Uh, it's was a message and instantiates code ID eight seven with ourselves as the admin. Uh, it has a reasonable label. Uh, it's got an owner, a staking address, a reward rate, and a reward token. So I'm saying this looks good. Let's make our proposal. So, uh, this will spend. And while this spends, let's like look briefly at the execute messages we this thing has. So it's got an update config message. We probably don't care so much about that. It's got a distribute message and it's got a withdraw method. So we really care about this distribute message. And also we need to figure out a way to fund this thing. So let's take a look at the actual contract. And look at how it gets funded. <laughs> I wouldn't actually look at this contract in one time. Let's see, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, so then we can see from here that it doesn't actually need to be told specifically it's being funded. And we can just like send funds or admit tokens for this rewards contract. So I'm going to vote on this proposal. I am the only member of this DAO, so it's like going to work. Um, dun, dun, dun. And then once this executes, we should get an address for the smart contract. Cool. Amazing. Okay, look. So now we've instantiated it, and we've got the address of our contract in the action. Um, so that's kind of neat. Let us now give some funds to this contract. I'm going to go back to token now. So now it's like we've made the rewards contract, but the rewards contract doesn't have any tokens to pay rewards in. So it needs those. So I'm going to make a proposal called fund the rewards contract. Okay. And we're going to mint some tokens. And we're going to send it the rewards contract address. And let's just mint like effectively infinity tokens. Like just a truly disgusting amount, because um, we just don't want it to run out. Um, but if you're so if you're actually doing this, you're going to do something like, oh, I have a rewards rate. That's one thing, 
and I have a um, a rewards weight. That's one thing. I want these blocks. Like, say you had a rewards weight rate. It was like 10 tokens a block. And you were like, oh, I want my tokens to pay out for 10 blocks. But then you'd give it 100 tokens. In our case, we don't really care. So we're just going to give it a ton of tokens. Um, cool. So when I execute this proposal, it's going to mint a huge number of tokens for the rewards contract. Let's do that. What is the best way to configure the reward rate? Yeah, so we did that in this. So we set the reward rate. So this includes decimals. So we set the reward rate here to like, let's see, it looks like 10,000 tokens per block. Yeah, we set, oh, sorry, we set the reward rate to 100,000 tokens per block here. Uh, and if you wanted a different reward rate, you could just set it to a different reward rate. Um, and you can also, if you change your mind later, you can uh, execute this update config method and change the reward rate. So um, we could actually practice doing that if you'd like. So anyway, I'm going to execute proposal three. I'm going to approve it. And so this should send tokens to the rewards contract. And so after I've done this, like there's going to be two things we've completed. One, we will have a rewards contract. And two, that rewards contract will have money. So now we just need to tell the rewards contract, like, hey, buddy, let's, uh, let's distribute those rewards. So to do that, let's, I guess, do it via a data proposal. But let me show you the way you'd actually do this. So distributing rewards is not, um, it's not permissioned. Anyone can say, hey, contract, distribute the rewards that you were supposed to distribute. And before someone says that, the rewards will not be distributed. So let's go back here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go GND. So first, let's take note. Also, I just I hope this works. <laughs> I haven't actually tried this yet, so <laughs> okay, so cool. So right now I've got uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand tokens staked, and two unstaked, and two hundred fifty thousand tokens staked. So if I run this, this should change. Same. Oops, same. Yeah, so I always just struggle to like remember what the Oh, cool. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna execute a message on the stake and rewards contract and I'm gonna tell it to distribute. So I'm going to say, hello, contract. May you please distribute the token rewards? And I say, hopefully. Hopefully it's going to be like, yes, I'd love to do that. Oh, but I didn't send it enough fees. So. You can see, like, when I tried to send this transaction, it didn't like it because it said I didn't send it enough money. It's like I didn't pay, pay the blockchain and FBs. Cool. So in theory, that worked. Let's just create the transaction and see what it did. Yeah, so it looks like this actually worked. So cool. If I go back to data and go to token down and I refresh this page, I should have more tokens. I do. Look at that. So look. I have more tokens. I just got paid rewards. Kind of neat. You guys see that? Look, I had 250,000 and now I have 5,950,000. So we've successfully set up staking rewards. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Um, but obviously there's a lot here. So, so what's, what are you guys thinking? Does this make sense? Is there something you'd like to see again? Um, 
this is like super fast. I understand. So, so, and I think one of you is recording this. So maybe you could like, if you do record it and put it somewhere, you could um, definitely send it to the other people on this call. Um, cool. So does anyone have questions? Do we want to see an update config thing? Um, what's up? Yeah, if we could see an update of the configuration, that'd be awesome. Oh, good. So, what's kind of funny is like, I use the terminal to do this distribute call, but it's like kind of a pain. I'm like, man, it would have been a lot easier to just use data to do that. So actually, maybe let's do that. Let's like, this way you guys, I can send you the link to this DAO and you can just like see all of the messages. So let's distribute and execute con update config. Actually, update and config will distribute, but um, yeah, let's just update the config. So I don't know, we could just say like something silly, update message me. Oh, cool. Okay, no worries, right? That's fine. I appreciate you being here, even though you're in a vehicle. Yeah. Um, yeah, so cool. Let's update the configuration of the stake and rewards contract. Um, what do you want to change? Do we want to like, we could just change the rewards rate to be like lower. <laughs> it's a pretty simple contract. What's the math that goes into configuring the rewards rate? Like, Yeah, so re rewards rate is a um, number of tokens paid out per block. Does that make sense? Um, so like say, every, you know what a block is? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh. Uh, yeah. Got it. Yep. Exactly what frame report should say. Yeah, that's a good question. So, like, I don't know. I think it sort of really just depends on, like, what you want. So, like, RawDAO, they allocated 60% of their token supply to rewards. And so they're, like, really leaning heavily on, like, okay, let's, like, use this token for farming. Um, I think it really just depends on, like, what your DAO is doing. Um, my thought it's would be... 10%. Like, like, how would you configure the reward rate? Oh, reward sure. Or like a 10% uh, reward rate? Yeah, that's a good question. So that's like basically just a little bit of math. Um, so we can like look here and say like, okay, so there's, um, so there's like 10 billion of these tokens that are in this DAO. And so if I wanted like a 10% uh, reward rate, I would just like divide this by 10. And that's this section of the tokens that I should use for rewards. Um, that makes sense. Like, so then like, so say I'd like, well, let's just keep it really simple. Say I had like a hundred tokens in this DAO and I wanted to use 10% of those tokens for staking rewards. Then when I was funding the rewards contract, instead of just like making up this huge number, I would just put like one there, which would be 10%. Say, okay, I've now allocated one of my 10 tokens, so 10% of my tokens to paying staking rewards. Does that make sense? Yep, that makes it a little bit more understandable. Yeah, so it's like all just depends on your DAO and like, as far as like uh, what I think is a good staking rewards, I don't really know if I have a great answer for that. Uh, there's probably like I don't know. I, like it depends on what you want to do with them. Like if you're just like yeah, right. Statistics aren't important. I just wanted to do the wrong. Sorry, I was hearing two things at once. Uh, I just want, I didn't, 
care that much about the specifics. I just wanted the basic algorithm, so to speak, to be able to figure out the best reward rate. Say if I had a billion tokens and I wanted to allocate 10%, how, like I just wanted to figure out what, what, what would be the method I would have to do in order yeah. to do that per block rate. As, so. Yep. So if you had a billion tokens and you wanted to distribute um, 10% of them, you would just say, what is 10% of one, one billion? And then you'd send that many tokens. You'd allocate that many tokens to the rewards distributor. For the rewards rate, it would then depend on the amount of time you wanted it to take to distribute those tokens. So let's say, like, for my previous example, what let's say I, you know, I had uh, a thousand tokens and I allocated 10% of them, so 100 tokens, and this under the rewards contract proposal to the staking rewards contract. If I wanted those staking rewards to pay out over the course of like a year, right, then it would be like I would want a rewards rate probably that's like quite low, right? Like I'd say like maybe in a year there's like, a hundred blocks, so I'd want a rewards rate of one one hundredth of a token a block. Like I'm completely making up these numbers, but like you kind of see where I'm going here. Of like, you want to say like it's it's there's two things you're trying to figure out. It's like what percentage of tokens do I want to allocate to staking rewards, and then you also need to figure out how long over what period of time do I want those tokens distributed. And then once you have those two things, you can select like for the amount of tokens to allocate that that 10 percent number and then for the rewards rate just like the n amount of time like it'll take at that rewards rate for it to reach the amount of tokens you've allocated that makes some sense it's just kind of it's just like your little math problem basically um was there another question framework beach fortune where you do you have something Yeah, you totally can. So, uh, yeah, if you wanted to do that, you would want to run a, like by default, data DAOs are able to update their mentors. If you wanted to not update your, have your mentor be updatable, you could run, like you could make a regular data DAO. Um, and then you could like make a proposal to your DAO to turn off minting. So like, if we look at this, is actually someone else in data. Did this is this couple last did this recently. Um, but there is a oh god, um, and, uh, packages twenty. Sorry, message. Yeah, so there exists this update mentor method um, where you can set a new mentor. And so you can set this to nothing. Um, so basically you just like make a DAO and then you'd call this update mentor method on your um, on your CW20. And it would stop it from being able to mint. Um, or you could talk to me and we could just like make a special DAO and it would take like a couple seconds that doesn't have a mentor set by default. Yeah, no worries. So you got yeah, basically you could do either buy a governance or just like just like ping me and I can help you um do the necessary just like incantation to make a DAO like that. Um <laughs> so cool. Let's look at let's return to our earlier task of updating the config. <laughs> so so again, I like if I want to do this, I'm gonna to go to DAO contracts. This this GitHub repo, if you're doing this stuff, is gonna be like you're gonna spend a lot of time in here. <laughs> so and then I'm gonna look at message.rs and look at the update config method. So cool. So I'm gonna run a update config method message on this. Did someone else try? Oh, Renze, you made it. Hello. <laughs> it, it, 
<laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually going to, for this message, I'm going to take uh, the same, basically the same stuff as I was using before and use it. So, and all I'm going to change, because I don't want to change a lot, is like, let's change the reward rate to be like really low. So this would like uh, distribute, so this is going to distribute, this will distribute six tokens per block, or 10 tokens per block. So it's going to take like Indica Forest per like the earlier discussion, like once we change this, now because it's distributing at a much lower reward rate, like 10 tokens a block, and we allocated like a billion tokens for this, um, this is now going to take a long time to distribute those tokens. Um, but so we can just like do to do, do this proposal. Um, and this will pass. We'll vote on it. I'm the only member of the DAO. This will work. And then done. And then, oh, actually, a cool feature of DAO. I don't know if you guys have found this yet, but if you click the party button, you get a rocket ship, and then you can count down to execute your proposal. Anyway, <laughs> so we're going to execute this. And then this will now update the config of our rewards contract. Uh, cool. So if we go back here to token DAO and refresh again, like my balance is going to go up a lot or not. Yeah, you notice my balance, like it's not moving as fast anymore. It used to be moving really fast. Um, but now because there's, yeah. Yeah, basically we lower the rewards, right? So I'm going to get paid out slower. Um, and just for posterity, we can execute and I distribute my certificate one. Cool. So anyway, that's it. We've uh, successfully made a DAO. And you can see it's distributing tokens. That was a zero, and now it's a 70. Uh, so like, life's good. We've got a DAO with staking reward. It's working. You Run through one more proposal of doing the. Uh, you were talking about running it through the terminal and how it has some difficulty, and then we kind of went off on a tangent on the update. Sure. To back to that aspect of running that contract through the DAO DAO. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, say you like, say we want to distribute tokens and we don't want to do the command line nonsense. I like I like data. I feel like we need to make data, but it's like not for data such as people. And all we have are these like templates. And so you can just like do the like do the technical stuff that sucks, like not via command line and just via that out UI. But anyway. So let's distribute some tokens. I don't know why I'm I'm just adding descriptions of these so that when you guys if you guys go back and look at this DAO, like you have some idea what's going on. But like when you're watching this, it's like probably ridiculous because <laughs> it's like you know what's going on. Cool. So earlier to execute the distribute message, we did like this, which was like pretty gross. Not the most pretty, not the not the most beautiful thing. Um let's see. Nice. Um, yeah, so earlier we did this, and this was like gross. Like, this is hard. I've talked to some of you at least about like getting GNOD installed. It actually sucks. We need better docs about that. Um, maybe one of you could write them if you figure it out. Um, so, anyway, it's kind of hard. So, instead, we can just use the data UI. And so, this is going to distribute tokens. It's going to do it with a rewards contract. We need it with the execute smart contract thing. So let's go back here and get our address. Wow. And we're going to do a distribute call on it. So this will distribute some tokens to, this will uh, execute the distribute message on our rewards contract, um, which, when it's, which when executed will cause the rewards contract to pay out rewards to stakers. So I'm going to make the proposal, and then we wait for a block to happen so it gets in the block. And then I'll vote on the proposal and execute the proposal, um, and it'll happen. Um, uh, how's it going? While we're waiting for this stuff to load, do you guys have questions? Does that make sense? Cool. That's fast. We got fast blocks. 
Cool. Everything makes to me. I think I'm good on it so far. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm glad this is making sense. <laughs> this is like, okay, cool. So we did it. So this is like called the distribute message on our stake reward distributor. Uh, if we refresh the page, so like this is I don't know. We can probably do better at this, but like this number one update unless you refresh it. But it should like for most people it won't matter, right? Because your rewards aren't getting paid out at like a rate that's noticeable per block. You know, like we've really cranked up the reward rate here so that it's good for a demo. But in practice, like your users won't be like sitting refreshing this page because you're doing like tokens every like six blocks or every 15 minutes or something. Um, so anyway, but you notice like we called the distribute message and my like token balance is just like creeping up and the DAO saying, thank you for being a staker. Um, so yeah, cool. So we've done it. We've deployed a staking rewards contract. We've funded the contract. We've uploaded, updated the configuration of the contract and we've distributed tokens. Um, that's everything. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's actually, uh, mm, I, uh, I, so I, I can't do, I can show you. Okay, yeah, so say, Dada will automatically pick up if you add Adam to the treasury. And I can't demo that with Adam, but I can show you that with uh, GenoX. So I'm just going to stop. Uh, let me change windows to taking down. Okay. And yep. Yep. Yeah, it'll do everything. So if you if IB if you IB to a DAO, it'll send it. So I'm gonna do that right now. I don't think you guys can see my Kepler County. Um but I'm just gonna like send Oh, you can't. Nice. That's spooky. Um, so I have a lot of Juno X because I do a lot of Juno dev. But anyway, uh, it was valueless. Um, so I'm going to send 10 Juno X to token DAO. And once this completes and we refresh this page, this will like automatically get picked up and detected. And it's the same gig with Adam. So if I were to just like send, I can't, this is this DAO's in the testnet, right? But if I were to send 10 Juno to this, to 10 Adam to this DAO, you'd get like another symbol here. And it would say like your amount of atom. It'll just like automatically figure that out. Um, that makes sense. Yep, nothing fancy. Yeah. So if we like went on. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then once once you do that, like Dada will also like figure out that you've done that, and it'll say like it'll let you spend those. So like if you wanted to like. You sent your Adam, and you're like, actually, I don't want to send that anymore. You could just go and make a proposal to send it to yourself. Um, so we can, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so we're like, we're, <laughs> NFTs are hard. I was just working on these recently. This is like what I was doing this week. I'm going to merge this. Um, NFTs are kind of hard because, uh, like, if you have a Stargaze NFT, I actually do not know if it's possible right now, if Stargaze makes it possible to send Stargaze NFTs to other chains. Um, you might know the answer to that. It's possible. I just don't know. Um, but so, like, a Juno NFT, if you were on, like, what's it called? Hoppers? I don't know. Whatever. If you got an NFT on Juno, you could send it to the DAO. It could control it. We don't have great NFT support yet. We're, like, actively working on that, uh, but it's not, like, perfect yet so i would i would uh i would like you know tread with care using nfts like right now they're a bit of an advanced feature but that's like literally like next on the roadmap like we're like currently working on smart contracts and designs to have super good nft support and data if you just like wait a little bit it'll be really good um but yeah datas are just like people they're just like wallets they can do everything people can they just are controlled by wallets controlled by people. Can you go through the external rewards distributor proposal? Like how that would be formatted? Use, uh, if oh, yeah. You have Adam. Uh, I see that smart contract in there. Can you go through like a little brief preview of what it would look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, so external rewards, this is for distributing rewards that aren't in terms of your governance token. So this would be like 
If I was on JunoSwap and I wanted to distribute rewards in Juno, I would use this. Um, so for this contract, uh, I actually not really use this, although I reviewed it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, so this contract is a similar gig to, uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty similar. So you'd have the same flow. You'd like instantiate it and there'd be some like extra fields here for the reward token. Um, actually, I think this has effectively the same. Yeah, so you, it's exactly the same flow effectively of like you would instantiate this uh, and then you'd fund it by executing this fund method. And then you would call a claim on it. So users, not you, would call claim on it to reclaim the rewards they were entitled to. Um, this is not gonna, uh, this is not gonna work with the data UI. You'd have to build your own UI for this. This is built primarily, I think JunoSwap uses this. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really, this, this contract, is a great contract, it's been audited, uh, but it's currently not supported by the data UI. So if you want to distribute rewards in terms of Juno, you're out of luck for now, if you if you don't want to build your own UI for that. Makes sense. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I was, so uh, if that has to do with the Juno, then if you did have Adam in the treasury, then how would you be able to go about distributing that add them to stakeholders. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you can send it to them. <laughs> you could do it. Uh, you could use this. You could build a UI. You can send it to them. I mean, there's like ways you could do it. Um, is there a reason you'd want, like, is this like if your DAO made money and you wanted to pay the members? Like distribute it like dividend style to members. Yeah. Say okay. well. Yeah. For a specific example, say like you're holding an NFT and that NFT earns a certain cryptocurrency that's not native to. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to pay that out to the stakeholders as well. Yeah, that's a great question. I, we don't really have great support for this, although I did a while ago work on this. Um. Let's see. I was working on this a while ago. There exists a contract that we're working on that will do exactly what you want. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's a point where I can't find. Let's see. Ah, there's you could. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I wrote a while ago this contract, which does that, which does dividends. And then I closed it because I wanted to work on something else immediately. But we could talk. Like, this This will eventually get landed. We will eventually have a contract that we wanted to do here. Um, just going to take a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think this is totally possible and we can like do this just would like require some work and you'd have to build some UI yourself probably. Um, or if you, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I'd love to like, I, I don't, I think probably the, like, adding UI for NFTs. Like if you're doing this with NFTs anyway, it has to happen we do this. So I think like immediately it's like this next week is probably like getting started, getting ramped up on NFT stuff. And like, I can move this up on my list. So things to work on. Um, cool. Well, so I, it's like Sunday morning for me. Um, does anyone have any other questions or should we like wrap this up and like, ask more questions in chat as they come along. 
I think I'm good for now to run through some things. Besides, can you go through a little bit more about your environment setup? Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, so, really, like, the best I can say is, like, follow the Gina docs. Like, this is just going to be, like, basically, my environment setup is just this, basically. <laughs> I just, like, went to docsgeno.io CLI this page and just like read it and did it. And like, that's kind of, you just got to do it. <laughs> it's just like, it's really like, it's not that, it's not that like big brain. It's just this. Um, yeah. And then I like have Rust installed and stuff, but I mean, it's like, none of that's like, yeah, I think it's pretty, it's not, yeah, it's pretty pretty standard stuff. All right, because I was just wondering, because I tried running through it with VS Code, and I had some trouble, so I'm now try, uh, using IntelliJ with a Rust plugin, and then I'll probably go back through the Juno docs and make sure I have everything set up through that way. But Nice. I was just yeah, that's through. probably the best way. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, thanks so much for like listening to this, guys. I'm sorry I was so late. It was just sort of a crazy, hectic, hectic morning. Um, and uh, yeah, I will like still be around if you guys have questions to ask in general or wherever. You can just ping me, uh, and let's like collectively solve staking rewards. <laughs> it's gonna be cool.